everybody. This is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage uh, making a video of a Singer 99. This is the uh, one of two Singer 99s I made a video on a while back. I was comparing um, the changes that the 99s had gone through over the years. This is the model from the 1920s and of course the Singer 99 uh, was a three-quarter, three-quarter meaning it was three-quarters width of a Singer 66. Uh, the great thing about the 99 is it has the same exact power as the 66, uh, but with a slightly lighter footprint, right? You take, a, you take 25% of the weight from the 66 and you take it away, you get what Singer called a portable sewing machine. I still think they're pretty darn heavy, but uh, I guess as compared to other machines, it was relatively portable. Uh, this particular machine comes in its original Bentwood case. And you can see, this is the case that uh, she came in. It's the Singer Bentwood cases. Um, it's amazing that these cases have survived as long as they have. Uh, of course, if you have a different Singer model that is, um, that is the normal 14 and a half inch width, you would need the longer uh, Bentwood case. I went and got one of those today for a client, uh, for a machine I've got. But, uh, the little 99 is the, the, you know, the little engine that could, literally. Uh, I've made a video, by the way, on this bobbin winder. So for those of you who are not used to seeing this bobbin winder, I kind of like it, actually. Uh, uh, take a look at that video and let me know what you think. Um, I don't really do a lot of bobbin winding videos, but that one, I thought, deserved, deserved uh, attention. Uh, anyway, the machine has been completely gone through, and this bobbin winder is... Uh, ready to roll, just as strong as the day it, it was made. Uh, of course, this being a um, three-quarter version of the Singer 66, it uses um, Class 66 bobbins. So I'll pop the bobbin out here and show it to you guys. So this, of course, is the 66 bobbin, and they, they rest down in the bobbin case uh, horizontally, or like a pancake. And uh, this, of course, is also used in the Singer 66, the Singer 185J, and the same bobbin is used for the Singer 201, uh, although the 201 has a different shuttle design. So I've got my bobbin loaded, and I have the top thread loaded. Got a blue thread uh, up top, and then um, a sort of an off-white thread, or a white thread on the bottom. And I'm gonna show you guys a couple of materials today to show off this machine now that it's ready. Uh, for a new client. Uh, this is canvas from a tote bag and it's, I'd say it's, you know, medium, medium heavy weight. I know that's kind of a gauge. You just have, I'm having to eyeball that. Uh, and then I've got, first I've got two layers, but then I've also got another two layers where this, uh, where it's been folded over in this seam. So we will let it sew through two and then uh, I believe three layers with the seam there. So I'll let you guys get a, get a, get kind of a feel for how this machine works. I have a size 16 needle in her right now. Uh, it, it always bears repeating that anytime you see a machine that is being demonstrated and has a reputation for being able to sew heavy fabrics, don't think it's only for that. Keep in mind that vintage sewing machines, uh, you know, they had to serve many purposes. A machine like this could sew everything from lightweight cotton dresses all the way up to heavy drapery fabric. Because most families, you know, they can only afford one sewing machine. Now, these things were quite expensive. And so it had to be a very flexible device uh, used throughout the home. Uh, but anyway, the reason you often see me demonstrating uh, machines like this with, with heavier material and larger needle sizes is simply because so many of the people that come to me for a machine tell me they get frustrated with the newer machines because the newer machines will do some things quite well, but when you get to anything beyond a, a medium cotton, they, they start to fail, unfortunately. They're built very weak, most of them. Anyway, I will start with my um, needle down, and uh, all of the details of, of what this machine has received will be in the listing. Uh, this machine has a new cord, a new foot pedal, uh, so let's demonstrate how she sews here. Very quiet machine.
machine comes with a Singer light. I think it's always amazing that after all these years, you can still buy bayonet style uh, light bulbs, uh, just like the ones they came with originally. That's that's how uh, much of a standard this became back in the day. And we'll give it another run through on this side. She can sew fast or slow. Anytime I'm working with heavy materials, I like to slow it down. And of course, like most singers, this machine will uh, allow you to get some slower needle control. Now let's take a look. I'm going to show you to change the stitch length on this machine. Right now the knob that you see here, this nice heavy uh, plated knob, is turned all the way to the right and, and is closest to the machine. That's the long stitch. If you want to shorten the stitch, you turn it to the left and you will see the knob begin to come toward you. And uh, as always with any vintage machine, if you're going to do a short stitch, always make sure you have enough length in the setting that the feed dogs will actually move the material. If it doesn't, you're, you'll end up with a giant ball and nest of thread. Um, but we should have uh, we should have gotten close enough that it will. Oh yeah, she feeds beautifully. Now I'm going to take this out and I'll see what we can see if I can show off to you the stitch that this little powerhouse makes. Hopefully I've got some really nice afternoon light in here, guys. We're starting to get those lighter days. Here's the top thread, and you can see even when it goes over the seam, you've got three layers of the, uh, of the canvas. It, it went over it, you know, with no effort whatsoever. Um, and the stitches are nice, uh, uh, nice and tight. It's even hard to see where they pick up and leave off. On this side, sorry, I, I, I tried to have enough... Um, contrast, but the bottom thread is white. I have sort of a cream colored canvas, but I think you might be able to make it out. Uh, hopefully you can, or is that wishful thinking on my part? Uh, I try to, to get, um, here we go. In this light, you should be able to see the stitches forming. Just really beautiful. Uh, what else can we show? Let's see. This is fabric-backed vinyl. This is often used for um, uh, use outdoors. Uh, boat owners will use it. Uh, it has many other uses. And this should show off our stitch colors on both sides. So I'll put this back to back. Now, ideally, when you're sewing with vinyl or leather, you want a leather tip needle. For the purposes of this, I'm not gonna have you guys watch me switch the needle out. So I'll just go ahead and uh, I'll use the fabric needle. If you're gonna sew a lot of this, you definitely want the leather tip needles. Uh, they're not hard to find. You can get them anywhere you get the fabric needles. And I'm going to let this feed with, um, with just the straight stitch uh, foot, the, the uh, standard foot on this machine. If you really want uh, your machine to feed properly, uh, ideally you want either a roller foot. Roller foot is, is your best bet. You can get them with uh, a metal shank and a plastic end. Some people like that so they can see through. Or you can get just a, a metal roller foot. And those are very useful. when Sometimes leather and vinyl will want to stick to the foot and they don't. it doesn't feed very well because there's too much friction. So we'll start again with the needle down. And I can, uh, let's see, I'm going to actually change the stitch length back to the long, length, longest length, uh, which is you want the longest length stitch when you're sewing material like this because uh, you want your stitches to hold. You see how I can slow that needle down? I just took my foot off. Now let's come over here. That's me just barely giving it a uh, a touch of the pedal, but of course she can certainly sew this material quite quite fast. There you go. And again, the machine, uh, you know, it's ready to do more if we want. Machines like this will speak to you, and they'll tell you when they're when they're at their limit. Even though they have no computer brain to beep at you, you all you have to do is listen to them. Listening to an analog machine will tell you a lot, and you'll get a feel for what it what it's what it's supposed to sound like. This is what a '99 with its BU Singer motor should sound like when it's when it's running well, when it's happy. 
So let's take a look here, guys. Hopefully this light is going to really be useful for us. This is uh, the blue top stitching, the top thread that you see here. And then you can see the stitches on the bottom. And those are just, I think they're beautiful. You know, this machine is close to 100 years old. She's not worn out at all. She just needed servicing. That's, that's the way uh, our ancestors <laughs> Uh, built things, right? They were built to last, but they, they must receive service. And this one has. Um, whoever decides to purchase this machine, you um, really all you will need is to do is clean your feed dogs of lint um, with each project. It takes just, I don't know, 30 seconds. And then uh, just add a drop of oil in, in the oiling points before your projects. And that's it. It literally is that simple of a machine to use. But again, um, this machine has been updated with a new power cord. And I install, very often I install um, um, new foot pedals, different foot pedals on a machine. This one has a brand new foot pedal. And uh, anyway, this is the pedal I chose to put on her. And she is ready for a new life of service. I appreciate all of you watching and uh, some of you saw this little machine back when I first got it and it was a mess. It was a real mess. <laughs> and, uh, but I gave it the time and the patience that it deserved because uh, I just knew it would make a good machine for someone. And so have someone potentially interested, we'll see. But uh, anyway, thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. We are, um, uh, there should be more videos coming up soon. The exact topics will depend on the machines I get because I never know what's gonna come across my workbench. And whatever I get, I, I try to make a little video and share, share information with all of you as best I know. And of course, I'm learning so much from those of you who have been kind enough to leave your comments with your own suggestions. So thank you for that. And thanks for watching.